Happy Halloween, everyone. I'm author Loren Malloy, and I thought what better way to get into the Halloween spirit and to really celebrate the holiday than for me to read chapter one of The Storyteller of Pain. So sit back, relax, grab a drink, and join me while I read chapter one of The Storyteller of Pain. Remember, you can find my books through Amazon and Barnes and Noble in paperback and Kindle. The Storyteller of Pain, Chapter One. Don't you see? I'm a map of scars. Under this skin, under this flesh, a book of scars tell the story of my life. I'm like a patchwork quilt, but nothing so pretty or so neat. Each scar is a story. Each story leads to another scar and another story. The story is never complete. It will never be complete. I am the storyteller of pain. That's nice, Mrs. Delacour, but I asked you how you slept last night. The psychiatrist looked at the woman sitting in the chair across from her. Mrs. Delacour was mid-forties, came from a good family, and was dropped off at the sanitarium three nights ago. The family was powerful and wealthy. They simply couldn't afford to be seen with a lunatic for a family member. So they signed her over to the sanitarium for safekeeping. Mrs. Delacour had repeated the same thing to any question she was asked. Don't you see I'm a map of scars? Dr. Sinclair had been head psychiatrist there for seven years. In all those years, she had never been so puzzled as she had been with Mrs. Delacour. The history given showed no signs for hysteria nor any psychosis. No signs of trauma or abuse seemed present. She hadn't had a patient like this before. She's had patients who ramble things plenty of times. She's even had patients who just seemed to crack one day and never return. This was different. Lillian had never felt this before. She knew she couldn't base things on her feelings or her emotions, but she had never felt like this before with a patient. Lillian had been in rooms with murderers, rapists, and madmen alike, but she was never scared, only fascinated and professional. Delia Delacour was different. Lillian couldn't explain it, but the moment Delia spoke, Lillian had goosebumps appear on her flesh, and a chill flew up her spine. Delia's eyes looked dead. Her voice sounded empty, cold, and raspy. The only word she could think of was haunted. It was a look of horror, of seeing too much for the mind to handle, a nightmare that would never stop replaying before the person's eyes. Waking or asleep made no difference to Mrs. Delacour. She was stuck in an endless loop of horror. Whatever she saw, whatever happened to her, it was bad, very bad. Her skin was pasty, pale, and clammy. Her eyes were wide, bloodshot, fear-ridden, and yet somehow looked dead and lifeless at the same time. Mrs. Delacour seemed like a marionette that only came alive when it was time to say her little speech. She was like a pull toy with only one message. Ask a question and an invisible hand pulled an invisible cord somewhere deep inside her, and suddenly, she had lifelike movements and speech. When she finished her message and it finished its recording, she would go back to a lifeless looking marionette. It was disturbing to say the least. All Dr. Sinclair could think was, what could make a person become like that? This had been their first therapy session since the intake when she was admitted. It was the standard 48 hour observation in confinement. It was during that time the staff decided it would be best for Mrs. Delacour to stay in confined quarters indefinitely. The next morning after Mrs. Delacour arrived, the staff had told Lillian that putting that woman in general population was a terrible idea. Anything other than confined quarters would be detrimental to the rest of the patients and would become a dangerous situation for everyone involved. Dr. Sinclair asked what brought this 
conclusion so quickly. She was told by the head nurse at the moment they put Mrs. Delacour into observation. The patients in the rooms around her began to get extremely agitated and violent towards themselves. The fear was palatable and the screams were deafening. It wasn't until they removed the rest of the patients one by one into different rooms away from Mrs. Delacour that the patients settled down at all. Delia herself didn't move from the spot on the cot where they placed her. She just sat there, not moving a muscle, except to speak her message over and over again. When they checked on her in the morning, she was still in the same spot, same position, saying the same thing. Delia never slept, not once in all that time. It baffled Dr. Sinclair to hear of such extreme reactions from the other patients without Delia needing to do anything to stir them up. Dr. Sinclair just stared at her patient for several moments. It had now been three days and Delia had still not slept. The Veritol milligrams have been upped for the third time in three days. If this Barbitol medication doesn't work to knock Delia into slumberland, then she would be the first person in the hospital's history to not have this medication work. It's what all the patients at Danvers Lunatic Asylum were given at bedtime. Once, they had to up the dosage for one of the male patients, but he was six feet tall and seven inches. He weighed almost 350 pounds. Upping his dosage only made sense. The right milligrams for the right person's weight. Mrs. Delacour was not by any means a massive individual and five times the recommended dosage was unheard of. Lillian prayed this time it worked because otherwise she wasn't sure what medicine to prescribe for sleep that would actually work for her. Delia just sat there motionless staring at Lillian. The feeling was very unnerving to say the least. Chills of fear ran up and down Lillian's body. She now understood completely why the staff and other patients felt so fearful of this woman. A sickening lump of ice was forming in Lillian's stomach. No matter the question she asked, Delia would begin her same monologue. It was very frustrating to, to Dr. Sinclair. She even tried letting Delia finish her whole message and then asked, but why are you suddenly the storyteller of pain? The reply was the same speech started all over again. Never a word was chosen differently than the time before. It seemed like a memorized speech, one that seemed to delete all other information from her being. It was just so frustrating. It was like a recording with only one message. Where did the rest of the recording go? Where did Delia go if this is all that was left, Lillian thought. Delia certainly was acting extremely dysfunctional. As for her lack of sleep, if they couldn't find something that would knock her out, her health would become seriously endangered. Finally, the appointment with Delia was over. Lillian learned nothing new about Delia, nor did she learn anything new about the woman's pathology. How does a high-class woman like Mrs. Delacour go from a radiant light and sheer delight to this pull toy? At first, Lillian thought it could have been caused by a delayed nervous breakdown after hearing the news that Delia's husband died overseas. Alas, that couldn't be the case. As it turned out, it happened over a year and a half ago. The family said she grieved for many months before showing her face again in society. She seemed to be in relatively good spirits after the grieving process was over. It also wouldn't explain her bizarre behavior. A loss of a loved one has never caused this kind of reaction in someone before. Lillian felt completely stumped by this case. Her meeting with Delia didn't illuminate the situation at all. The feelings she got from Delia weren't normal either. Lillian in fact, didn't like herself after the meeting. She didn't like how she felt after that meeting. Pure fear flooded her system throughout the whole meeting. It took all of Lillian's strength not to show her fear to her patient. She was truly grateful when the session finally was over and a nurse came and took Mrs. Delacour back to her room. 
Now that Lillian was alone, she felt sick to her stomach and had a massive migraine. She felt extremely out of sorts. Maybe it was because this case just didn't make any logical sense. Lillian sat in her office, completely puzzled, staring at the window that overlooked the grounds. Barkley, the night guardsman, startled her almost out of her skin when he turned the light on in her office. She had been sitting there pondering what to do with this bizarre case for so long and so deeply, she didn't notice nighttime had crept up on her. She was sitting in complete darkness. Holy shit, Doc! You scared the crap out of me! What are you doing sitting in pitch darkness? I would have knocked if I seen a light on. Lillian had always seen him in fleeting moments, leaving the building. Nothing more than a hello and a goodbye was ever exchanged before this moment. Lillian found herself realizing she had never really noticed him before. She took advantage of this moment to really look at him. The Storyteller of Pain by me, author Loren Malloy. Remember, you can find my books through Amazon and Barnes & Noble. Just look up my name, author Loren Malloy, L-O-R-E-N-M-O-L-L-O-Y. I hope you enjoyed chapter one of The Storyteller of Pain. I wish you a very happy Halloween and happy horrors from me, author Loren Malloy.